A lot of the recent Minecraft 1.20 features have attracted the same criticism that they feel too much like mods. This is a scathing indictment on what should be some of the best and most exciting moments in a Minecraft update or reveal, but instead it is reminding people of the modded versions of the game, something which isn't necessarily bad by itself, but modded Minecraft already exists. Why is vanilla Minecraft going after those modded ideas when instead it should be focusing on making the best vanilla experience, which then can be modded across later? This is a really good question and today I wanted to explain why I don't only think that it's a uh, okay thing that they're making modded feeling features but I also think they should actively be making more because modded is not a bad thing for Minecraft and that is because modded is too loosely used. Everyone knows the argument that wow everyone says something is modded feeling until it comes to the game and it's a normal part of it. Imagine what the Elytra would have felt like to players who had never flown before. It feels ridiculous and modded and like a gimmick but now it is a core part of long-term survival world and in the same way, features when they are new to you will always feel modded because they are fresh and brand new, but I'm not going to make that argument because everyone knows about that by now. If you've been involved in the Minecraft community discourse, you already know that yes, every update people say things look modded, but this update is a lot more so than every other one. This is because the sorts of features they're adding are ones that the community have wanted for a very long time. And instead of being modded because it's far, you know, it's out there like the Strider might be, uh, or it's really out there like some of these ridiculous mobs might be, uh, instead Instead, it feels modded because they're the quality of life features, they're the sorts of ideas that people would come up with quite early on. What if we had a pink wood and a brand new cherry blossom biome is not just a, you know, an idea that like, uh, oh wow, my Mojang's really adding a new pink wood, but this is an idea that the community have had for a very long time. In fact, it's been top of the feedback site for as long as that has existed. Players wanted cherry trees and so, so many mods of it existed and it's felt like a feature that Mojang wouldn't add. And so when they finally do, a part of the player base is like, whoa, it finally happened. And another part is like, well, this feels like our dreams and our dreams and reality are getting merged a little bit, which is a bit of a confusing idea, you might say. And so, um, yeah, I think there is a real valid reason as to why people are feeling this, but I also think that this is a feeling they should be going for, especially for 1.20. 1.20 seems to be the customization, the storytelling style update, and it, you know, it really it's mostly quality of life features. And so if they add a quality of life feature that is so good, every player's been thinking of it and every player's been seeing it in modded videos and going, yeah, that would make Minecraft better. Isn't that a good thing? The answer, of course, is yes. I think there are some types of mods like, uh, <laughs> you know, when there's like over a hundred types of animals in one update and they don't really do anything and they're just there to make pretty scenery or, uh, you know, like stuff like volcanoes and natural disasters or guns, heaven forbid, uh, is always the ridiculous example. Some of these mods are things that exist in mods and probably should stay in there. I don't want to use a sniper rifle to take down a cow yet. <laughs> you know, maybe I do, but uh, you know, I, I don't want to do any of those ridiculous things because it sounds insane, but what I do want, for example, are more features that make me go, ooh, this feels new and different, because ultimately, that is a good sign. If Minecraft makes only features in an update that you go, yeah, that honestly already should have been there. That, that feature is one that I'm surprised took them this long. Wow, lazy Mojang. That's not actually a good thing. When they only add features uh, that you're 100% expecting, we've seen the community's reaction, and it is... Meh. Um, with 1.19, they announced the entire update. In fact, they didn't just announce 100% of 1.19 before it, uh, you know, uh, a year before it came out. They announced like 110% of 1.19 because the fireflies and the birch forests and, uh, you know, like a, a few other little quirks of the update never came to be from the Minecraft live presentation. And so whenever something would be revealed, it wasn't just that we'd been expecting it. You know, it didn't feel mod-like because by the time the mangrove swamp came to Minecraft, we were like, yes, we've seen this so often. What does it do that's interesting? Oh, nothing, it's just a visual place. Eh, whereas when we see the cherry uh, grove, we're like, whoa, I didn't expect this would come to Minecraft. And that's a good thing. Looking at it and going, this doesn't feel real, is better than looking at it and going, uh, this feels mundane. This feels like something I don't want to be playing around with. And that is something that I think is a big win. That is something that I think Minecraft are getting right, are getting the excitement levels such that people go, this doesn't feel real. When something doesn't feel real, but is, that's good. When something doesn't feel real and isn't, well, I mean, that's the basis of a lot of people's major belief in spiritual systems. And when something uh, feels real and is, um, you know, it's it's just, that's the norm. Uh, uh, most of the Minecraft features that you think of as not being modded are not modded because they've been in the game for so long. Pistons and horses literally are mods. They are things that different developers besides Mojang made, and then Mojang later added them to the game. But you can't tell me you look at a horse and think it's mod. Okay, you know, actually, I 
look at a horse and I go, that's weird. But when you look at a piston and you see piston builds, these are just such a core part of Minecraft now that they don't feel like mods, despite the fact that in any literal sense of the word, they are. That's because they feel real and they are real. There is an expectation reality meshing uh, when, when things feel real, uh, but they're not. Uh, that's when we have like, uh, oh, why hasn't Mojang done that yet? And then again, the reverse is the exact ideal of like, things don't feel like they're real, but they are. A surprise biome announcement was incredible, and that is something Mojang should be aiming for more. I don't think, you know, this year, I, I don't necessarily agree with the first half of the strategy, where they announce way less ahead of time, like, oh, it's fine though, look, we've... Uh, we've announced three features at Minecraft Live. This was one of the most disappointing first announcements, but the follow-up has been pretty good, and it's led to this feeling of people saying, this is modded, which honestly, to me, comes out as this is excitement. But if you're cynical, you might say, no, I'm not saying this is so exciting and that's why it feels modded. I'm saying these features don't fit with the rest of the game. And that's a really valid argument, I think. Yeah, there's my Minecraft features don't fit with the rest of the game, but allow me to introduce you to some other features that really are mod-like, but you don't think of it as. Um, the Ender Dragon Egg is a great example. Look at the shape of this thing. This is not a Minecraft block. Every Minecraft block is, by definition, quite blocky. There are some that don't fit the mold, like the brewing stand and stuff like that. Even the brewing stand feels modded when you look at it by comparison to everything else. Uh, the enchantment table feels great. The brewing stand feels weird. And the Ender Dragon Egg is a weird relic that makes you question, what is it even doing there? And 10 years later, we still don't know the answer. But the Ender Dragon itself, uh, there used to be a blockier version of the Ender Dragon, as shown in this earlier concept art, but they deliberately made it a super uh, pixeled out block, which, uh, sorry, pixeled out mob, which might have made sense were they then later to make every other boss fight, something like that. But if you look at the Warden and the Wither by comparison, they're also super blocky, and so the Ender Dragon is so modded feeling. If the end came out today, we'd say, Minecraft doesn't need an end. It's a sandbox game, you idiots. This feels so modded, and it would feel so modded today. When you first play the end, when the end first came to Minecraft in 2011, it feels weird and wrong, and honestly, most players have never experienced it because, yeah, it's a, it's a lot of work to get there, and what even is the point of this whole weird place? I would say the never even, like, the never, if you look at the generation there, it looks over the top and honestly, somewhat modded. The Basalt Deltas is my favorite example of this. The Basalt Deltas doesn't feel like a real Minecraft biome. It still, to me, feels like something from some weird mod. Uh, the Strider, he's adorable and I love him, but he feels like a mod, right? All of these features, if you really are to look at them objectively, not through the lens of, if I'm not familiar with something, it must be a mod. If you look at these features objectively, they don't fit with the rest of Minecraft. And although I do think they could obviously make them fit better, and they could try and keep a consistent art style, I mean, every time I look at the sniffer and look at a cow, look at the turtle and look at a pig, like it's ridiculous the way they're trying to blend new and old sometimes, and it doesn't always perfectly work, but it's better than just saying, yeah, every update we discard uh, you know, the uh, every update we take the exact things that feel like they should already be in the game and we add those instead because eventually you run out of features like that. Um, as, um, as you might know, a lot of the update themes that they've worked on over the last few years, new caves and new... You, these things were discussed and these things were uh, mentioned to be added a long time ago. They've known forever they need to update the oceans. They've known forever they need to update uh, the uh, never, and they've known forever they need to update the end, uh, sorry, the uh, the cave dimension. <laughs> you know, the cave dimension, I'm sticking with it. The, if you think about it, the underworld of Minecraft is basically its own dimension, and so they did all of these things. It's incredible, and they've known forever that something beautiful would be adding the cherry trees. Uh, in fact, in my 2015 video of uh, features uh, coming. The cherry trees were mentioned, alongside, by the way, the aquatics and the caves, uh, but they eventually added all of these features. Isn't that incredible? The answer, of course, yes it is. And so, I think that more mod-like features is a good thing. I think you can go too far. I think if they do add a sniper rifle for me to uh, 360 no-scope that cow with, uh, don't get me wrong, that is ridiculous. I don't think that's a great idea. But I think at the same time, uh, they, they, you know, there is a limit to how much things should be modded, but every feature should feel like, ooh, this is different, this is a new gameplay mechanic, and ideally, they should keep refreshing these to bring them together, and also, they shouldn't be scared of scrapping them. Something Mojang developers say over and over again when people bring up that mod, you know, <laughs> whenever Mojang does a presentation, there's a mod developer who's made all of the features the next day, and yet it takes Mojang a year to do it. And the reason they say it takes a year is partially because they have to have quality concerns, and they have to make sure it works on Java and Bedrock. We're really seeing that this week, by the way. That'll be the second topic in this video, but... 
Um, you know, like uh, there's the Java Bedrock parity, making it sure it works on both and has no bugs. But the third reason they'll always give is, well, we do quality control. We we look at a list of 50 features and we say which 10 would be perfect for this update. They look at a list of 100 brand new ideas for mobs, and instead of just adding them all and having them all be useless, they add two, they add one, they add a brand new type of wood because it gives you a new uh, palette to play around with, rather than adding 100 types of wood and having no real way to find them. Uh, this is a really interesting idea to say that, yes, everything that Mojang adds should be the best in class, because I think when looking at previous updates, you can say like, really? Is that the best? Was that, you know, like, uh, the, the, but ultimately, if you look at, say, um, I think if you look at previous updates, you can see that the improvements they've made have made them more mod-like. I think, uh, you know, what better example to give of this uh, than to go back to the previous wood type they added. So they've added bamboo and they're adding uh, the cherry blossom wood in this update, and they both feel a bit weird to me still. They both have that new exciting feeling, but also that this shouldn't be here feeling. But if we go back to 1.19, mangrove wood is a standard part of the game now, but when mangrove was first announced, it felt, uh, so when, when mangrove was first added with this red planks, uh, they felt more to some people like why do we have red wood what the heck is that this is so odd there were so many new things you could do with your red wood and it's delightful honestly uh, but also at the same time it's like well uh, there are nice new things we can do with this red block, but also it doesn't feel like it should be part of the game. What felt much more natural were the mangrove planks that were announced at Minecraft Live uh, the year before. This is what the mangrove wood was going to look like, by the way. It's so ugly and dull, and it looked like it fit in Minecraft perfectly. If they added these ugly dull blocks instead of working on them and making them something the community wanted, then we'd have a feature that didn't feel mod-like. It feels perfectly vanilla, but honestly, vanilla means two things. It means not modded Minecraft, and it also means boring. You know, if your favorite flavor of ice cream is vanilla, do you know what that tells me about you? That tells me that you you like ice cream and that's perfectly fine and you know you're allowed to have your own tastes and decisions. Except you know what this is this is the IBX Toy Cat channel. If there's one thing we can do here, it's break the Minecraft rule of no one can tell you what you can and cannot do. I, vanilla ice cream, it's not the good stuff. If you don't like ice cream, which you clearly don't if vanilla is your favorite flavor, just have a sorbet. Sorbets they're they're, they're fruitier, they're like they feel like they're healthier and they have like less sugar probably. Don't fact check me on that. And so in the same way, uh, you don't want to be vanilla with your Minecraft features, or I think the problem with cherry wood is it doesn't look exactly like all the other woods we have. That was the problem, in my opinion, with dark oak. It looks like spruce and not a bunch more. Uh, that's why acacia, you know, when, when acacia and dark oak were both added, uh, it was a revolution to have acacia, and dark oak was there. I mean, it made woodland mansions later. Um, when uh, we saw the warped planks and the crimson planks added, the crimson planks are like, yeah, this is something, and the warped planks were, oh my god, it's a blue wood. And I think when looking at these side by side, like, there's a boring vanilla choice, and there's an interesting choice that goes somewhere else, picking the interesting road is what is leading us to better Minecraft updates. Um, and so, yeah, I do think Minecraft should have more mod-like features, and they shouldn't go too far on this. They uh, they easily could. They get yeah again like uh, what if what if we're doing three sixty no scopes on our cows uh, while we're on rust for one v one? We could have ridiculous uh, permutations on this. Uh, but at the same time, uh, I think that it, right now. Uh, they have been leaning quite conservatively on what features they add. Why not just say, hey, Minecraft developers, add a bunch of features to the snapshots and then, you know, add a bunch of features to, like, some internal snapshot system if you don't want to share it publicly, then we'll work it out. They should be willing to add more features to snapshots in some way where they say, yeah, we might just remove this, honestly, uh, or even do something fun. You know how we have the mob vote every single year where we pick, the Minecraft community picks between free mobs? Why not add free, genuine, very beta features to Minecraft snapshots and say, which of these three should we work on more? They're all bare bones concepts, kind of like how archaeology right now is just you shake some sand off a block and then it's that. Um, if they had to say, yeah, instead of archaeology, would you instead like something excavating? Would you instead like a brand new mechanic somewhere else? Making these features actually compete for the public might be a better idea. And as everyone knows, in general, competition leads for a better result for most people. Speaking of competition leading for better results for most people, did you know this episode of the Toy Cat Podcast, Deep in the Mine, is actually sponsored 
by YouTube Premium. I'm not actually, but if you have YouTube Premium, I honestly, this is one of the recommendations, especially if you live in the United States of America where there's ads, you get double ads on YouTube, it's crazy. Um, honestly, YouTube Premium is something that I would recommend you get, not just because you can skip ads without depriving creators of revenue, but also because it gives creators more money. It splits your YouTube Premium subscription between all of the artists you listen to on YouTube Music and all of the videos you watch on YouTube based on watch time. And I think that's a much better way of doing things. It means there's no crazy ad uh, nonsense going on like oh no it looks like we <laughs> it looks like you said the word uh, dig instead of dick uh, oh sorry you said the word dick instead of dig in the transcript and so now you get demonetized no none of that uh, YouTube premium allows you to simply uh, go on YouTube and watch ad free I really like the experience and I'm not getting paid anything to say this in fact it benefits most of your other subscriptions more than me but if you are going to watch uh, something like this you want to do it in your phone you want to do it with no ads uh, then YouTube premium is the easiest way to feel guilt-free and honestly if you look at the price of other subscriptions and you look at how much you watch YouTube it's something that I don't feel any guilt and pain for because it means YouTube doesn't have to like change their entire monetization system because one newspaper outlet who competes with YouTube conveniently enough finds some weird video of ads on it. No, none of that happens anymore and I think that's a big thank you to YouTube Premium. Yeah, you know, I have a real sponsor spot here. Look at that. That was a, I think that was a good sell. Um, they're not paying me any money so I can prove it by saying YouTube Premium is probably bad if you want to not spend any money at all. There we go. So with that said, um, <laughs> I, I, it was such a scathing criticism. I think another interesting point uh, regarding this modded feeling uh, comes down to how Mi Minecraft is developing two games at the same time. They're developing Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock, and from the outside in, honestly, genuinely quite esteemed games journalists, uh, I've noticed even, uh, genuinely don't know the difference between uh, Minecraft Java and Minecraft Bedrock. There's just a Minecraft update, and it comes out at the same time for everyone, and there is a really crucial difference between the games. I mean, first of all, as far as public perception goes, the Java edition is the loved, uh, it's the favorite child, right? And the Bedrock edition is the version of the game that makes all the money. You know, it's the it's the really financially successful child uh, that's available everywhere. It's doing really well for itself, but for some reason, the parents still love uh, the Java edition because he's he, you know he's, he was the original. He's the first child out. He's got all the love feelings attached to him. Or well, I, I don't know how parenthood works, and I hope I don't have to uh, at least during the course of this podcast. But um. There's a really interesting point in the way uh, that they're developing two games because it seems as though they have to develop the same features twice effectively. They need to not only develop a whole brand new mechanic around archaeology, they need to make this whole brand new mechanic work perfectly and not only work perfectly, work the same on Java and Bedrock. And you notice there are ways where they get this quite substantially wrong. Uh, the Java Bedrock uh, sh you know, sh shaking the sand of something different is quite an interesting one. The fact that the they change spawn eggs on the sand, uh, you know, for the fish on a bedrock to look like this before changing it back. Um, every single one of these, um, the, they made a lot of these interesting decisions where they developed the two versions of the game separately, then tried to bring them together later. We saw one of the interesting things King B. Dogs did with the, uh, the the ancient cities was he made sure, especially the warden, he made sure to get a behavior right on both before revealing either to the public. He needed to make sure that if the Java warden couldn't do something, the bedrock warden wouldn't do it either. If the bedrock warden couldn't do something, the Java one couldn't either to have that smooth seamless gameplay experience and you might say well how does that relate to the modded like feeling and that is something that relates to how much time it takes to make minecraft now honestly i think you know if you think about how hard it is to like sit down pen to paper and really get something done and then imagine trying to do the exact same thing but in a different language you're like okay i've got to do this in french now because literally uh java is programmed in java funnily enough and bedrock is programmed in c plus plus at it might be c -sharp. I think it's C++ though. Um, these languages are very different and you could probably write a converter, but it wouldn't work for Minecraft because the C++ version also runs on about a dozen different platforms with three major input methods. So now you need to cross so many different things. And I, if you think about the actual task of making Minecraft work on both platforms, it is absolutely huge. I've said this before and I'd advocate for it wholeheartedly again. I think that Minecraft should and maybe, uh, maybe even will at some point, uh, commit to just saying that like, yes, this is a really, really hard task. Maybe we should just not do it for certain things. Maybe there should be some features. Like right now, there are so many things exclusive to Java, so many things exclusive to Bedrock. Maybe we should just say, yeah, we'll add to those lists of features. Any brand new feature and any major gameplay feature will come to both platforms. But if, for example, um, you know, we can make 
the Warden have this fun uh, extra sonic attack on Java, but not on Bedrock or vice versa. Maybe they should do precisely that. And, uh, you know, this is something I, I, I would love to see how it actually goes. But the end result right now has been all sorts of features being cancelled just because they can't work on a small minority of one device or the other. If, uh, you know, if, if something doesn't work on Java, you're talking about 20 million of the 200 million Minecraft players not being able to enjoy a feature and so cancelling it for the rest? That seems insane, right? If you look at the Bedrock version of the game, the bundle couldn't come to Minecraft because they couldn't work it out on a touchscreen, but it's like, isn't that touchscreen version, you know, if you think about Minecraft Bedrock, it might be 180 million copies or something, but off those, most of those players aren't playing on a touchscreen at any given point in time, and so is that necessary? And the answer is yes, they want true uniformity, but I think that's an, there's an interesting point here, that uniformity has such huge costs, and uh, uniformity has such huge overheads that it always does bring things to an end. There's an argument, even the reason the Roman Empire collapsed is because of this, like, system collapse. They, they they set up their system so everything would be exactly the same everywhere with a super high cost of maintenance, you know, to maintain a Roman garrison in every city they conquer means you have to build a lot of infrastructure, you have to train a lot of men, you have to have a lot of materials, you have to, you have to standardize a lot of things, which makes you a better fighting force and a better force for civilizing the world, if you want to say... Can, can you say the Romans did that? I think it's okay. I don't think it's colonialism if it's 2,000 years ago, um, is the rules. So, uh, you know, like, as a civilizing force for Europe and the world, uh, the Romans go around, they do that, except now we've spent so much time and so much effort making a standard that just is so expensive, because again, uh, making the exact same thing in one place versus another has hugely different costs, but if you want standardization, you need that. Think about how airports work. It doesn't matter where you take off and where you land, you need to have the uniformity of I need to be able to speak to the radio controller in English via the radio. You know, you can't expect me to use hand signals. Or well, maybe they do use that in some tiny airports. But, uh, you know, like there's a standardized system and airports are hugely expensive because building an airport in a very warm climate quite easy. You just lay down the, the tarmac, you lay down the you lay down the, the stuff. If you want to build a, uh, you know, an air, a airport in a super cold environment, then the ground freezes and unfreezes and so cracks it. So every like few months you have to repave it. Also, the direction of north is always changing, so have fun with that. Um, there's, there's a lot of interesting things that change from place to place. It's really, you know, it's really, really easy to have a consistent supply of, uh, I don't know, baked beans if you live... If you live somewhere where the baked bean is common, I had to think for a second where they were, uh, but getting baked beans somewhere that's on the other side of the planet requires a lot of shipping that over there, and that's that's something that happens in Minecraft. We have now not just a game, you know, Minecraft is an indie game. It's not actually anymore, it's developed by the world's second largest corporation, uh, but Minecraft is an indie game uh, at heart. But that is how the Java edition needed to work. When they added more versions of the game and they committed to making them exactly the same, uh, they ran into an issue, uh, and that is the name of the game, is uh, obviously the same, but obviously needs uh, to have the same features, but quite differently. When you think about the uh, Bedrock edition of the game and you think about the Java edition of the game, you need to not think about them as being additions and think of them as being the same game, which means that every single platform Bedrock runs on, every single platform Java runs on, which is only free, but that still means uh, Linux and... Wait, Java, yeah, Java 1's uh, Mac and Linux, so you have to make sure that all of those binaries are the same, all of those binaries are the same, and that ultimately you get the same experience on all of those platforms. And this is something you got to think about. It's not just a overhead of making the coding work, it's not just an overhead of making sure it works on all the input devices, on all the operating systems, but then each of those operating systems needs to have roughly parallel performance. Minecraft has been going terribly in terms of performance recently, and that is with the efforts to keep it about the same. It needs to run well on a Nintendo Switch and it needs to run well on an iPad and it needs to run well on your brand new MacBook and the fact that they can make the game with all these new features that work exactly the same, more or less, with some weird exceptions, uh, but that that is what makes an update so big, in my opinion, and that's why I think they need to have quality control, but I also think it's a good example for why we need to have more of the experimentation that made Minecraft so big in the first place. You know, the, the fact that it takes a year to make an amount of content that is you know, fine, but is about on, on the par of an update that used to take two months is a, is, a, is, a, is a, a, a proof that although they're increasing the resources put in, they're not able to scale up certain things and they need to work out how to scale up those things. I think um, for Minecraft to feel like a big operation, uh, you know, for Minecraft, Java and Bedrock to genuinely feel like one game, you should look at both versions and have no clue 
uh, what's going on with Eva, or ideally you should look at both versions and say, uh, you, you should be able to look at right now and compare it to the past and say, yeah, I, I cannot tell a speed increase or decrease in updates. They've hired more staff and those new staff are doing the new things. Whereas right now we have new staff being hired to do all sorts of crazy things in Minecraft, but also existing staff have much harder jobs, much more time consuming jobs. Um, or you could go the theory that they're all lazy and they take two hour work days and they, they lay back and they go, that was a great day. Sure did enjoy that. I look forward to getting to work next month. <laughs> you can take that fear if you want to. I, you know, I, I, Mojang does look like they do have some very nice offices. I would be playing pool all day uh, rather than doing anything else. But I don't buy into that very personally. I think the much more likely thing is that actually the, 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 the complexity of the systems, the interoperability of too many people, and ultimately uh, the overhead that has increased like the Roman Empire, Mojang and Minecraft are one of the big phenomenons that have come out of Europe. And, uh, you know, they've decided that to make that phenomenon better, it has to be standardized. Maybe it doesn't need to be. Maybe you can start unstandardized, and then as long as you get to that standard point by later, it works better. This is something that obviously I am massively unqualified to talk about. The actual, you know, like, um, Mojang has hired all sorts of uh, people to get in there and work out how to get their people working together. But this is one of the big challenges of any big business, big idea. And uh, that is why uh, I think, if I had to say so, that is why Mojang as a company needs to make so many efforts to seem like they represent their employees. If one employee goes, oh, yeah, Mojang's doing this crazy nonsense. Like, what? Why? Why are they? Why are we? Why are they taking a day off and I don't know marching in the street to to protest? Something? You know that that seems a bit weird, doesn't it? That's not what I wanted to do. Uh, maybe maybe that you know that's that's one thing. Or maybe on the other side, they could say, yeah, why aren't we taking a stand right now? Why are we not using our game to make the world a better place? And you can you can reasonably make both arguments. So like, yeah, Mo Mojang should make better games. Or maybe you need to have the self actualization of Mojang is making the world better. And uh, yeah, trying to have an, like a company that can do all those things, very, very hard. But the one thing they can definitively do, with no questions, with no difficulty, is to make Minecraft feel more mod-like. Minecraft should be taking risks that make the community go, oh, and then they should look at the community going, oh, and they should maybe undo it. Minecraft should be taking risks that make the community go, ooh, and then they should be trying to do more of those. And ultimately, rather than getting a bunch of baseline, it's perfectly okay stuff, if Minecraft is a studio, uh, you know, game development is an art, in my opinion. There's a fun debate in that, actually. Do you want to go into it right now? Game development is an art because you're making a form of art, which is a video game. If a movie can be a piece of art, then a video game is an interactive movie. And interactive art is still art. If I place a banana peel on the ground outside of your door, that is art. And if you're in America, a lawsuit. But anyway, my point here is that Minecraft should be taking risks. Minecraft should be uh, using their artistic liberty to make a better end product for the people uh, that are trying to do the things. And I think that modded is a good feeling in that way. I think that uh, mod-like is a compliment. And I think that whatever features come next, I want to look at that update and go, ooh. <laughs> I want, you know, the crossbow, when it was first added, felt very odd. Uh, and honestly, even now, I still feel a bit odd using it. The trident felt very odd, and even now I say, eh, it's kind of missing a key purpose. Copper, whenever I find it in my world, I'm like, oh, this is, this is, is this a weird mod I'm playing? Um, and all of those three features, the crossbow is great. The trident somewhere in the middle. Copper is still missing its, like, key purpose. How many updates do we need to go? How many updates, Mojang? What does it take for, we to, for us to get good copper? I will, I will, I will stab a man using the brush. I'll stab a man using the trident. Uh, whatever it takes, just let me know, Mojang, and I will make that happen. But in the meantime, I think the one piece of feedback we need to stop giving as a community is this feels mod-like. It is, uh, it's just like saying to an artist, yeah, that's good, but it needs to be better. It's like, what needs to be better? How? What, when, how? You, you ever just say, you ever just hear someone say, you look terrible today? Because you do look terrible today. I see you. Um, but if, if someone says you look terrible without any better feedback than that, what can you do with it? I, uh, I, you know, there's, there's all sorts of feedback that means nothing 
if you don't have something constructive to add. The reason constructive feedback is so valuable is because it takes time. You know, it takes no time to have an instinctive reaction and to say, this looks bad. It takes actual time to think about like, well, you know, this new wood type looks awful because it's just a mixture of acacia and jungle. We have both those woods. We don't need a halfway. I would like a bright red block. I didn't say that last bit, but that's what they came up with after genuine feedback. If you don't like a feature and you think it's too modded, give real feedback about, yeah, I don't think Minecraft should be having features uh, where you dig blocks away because it's meant to be a game about breaking. You shouldn't have two ways to break the same block or, uh, you know, with pots. Why is it that you can punch them and you get the block back and you, if you break them with a, with a shovel, you don't get it back? Like, it, it feels, you know, that might feel wrong to you. That might be something you want to improve. And that is some genuine, po you know, that is constructive feedback that Mojang can actually act upon. If you want your ideas to affect the world, make sure their ideas that people can actually act upon, and then you'll be amazed at what a difference it makes. Speaking of making a difference, I'd appreciate it if you made a difference and subscribe to this channel to see more of these podcasts. It's uh, just about bi-weekly right now, but in the sense of like every other week. Why does bi-weekly mean both every other week and every two weeks? I, I don't know for sure. Um, and uh, yeah, the so the next episode will be probably a couple of weeks from now. And uh, this, is, this is something that you can listen to here on YouTube, but also on Spotify. So I totally recommend doing that second one if you like the audio-only experience. But if you like this here on YouTube, Thank you for watching it. Consider getting YouTube Premium or even better, becoming a channel member and I'll see you in the next one. Goodbye. Oh, I didn't I don't have a stop streaming button.